Hey guys, happy Friday. Welcome to another cook along with me. It's not really a cook along because usually I send out all the ingredients first. Um, let's get this viewer so that I'm like, there we go. And uh, today is very special. And the reason it's like a surprise live is because at the last minute we managed to organize a snail cook along. So we've got Mike, Michael and Kyle from Goshen Snail Farm and they are joining us to talk about snails. Did you know that in South Africa we had a snail farm? Unbelievable. Okay, welcome guys. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, you're allowed to talk. You can say like, hello, nice to be here, it's fine. Easy, take it easy. Yeah, hey? Really good to be here for having us. We really appreciate <laughs> the, the opportunity. Oh, cool, man. Obviously, uh, it's a pleasure. It's an honor to have you. So uh, for those of you watching, uh, what we're going to do, I'm going to tell you, like, we're going to make two cool snail dishes. So I know that anyone who grew up in South Africa who went to the spur will know that there's the garlic snail with the, with the bread. So I'm going to do like a modern take on that, but I'm going to do that a little bit later. But first, I'm going to get a snail and chorizo paella going. And once we are getting cracking with the snails uh, and like, and the paella is on its way, we're going to get some more questions going from um, Mike and Kyle. So in the meantime, if you have a question about snails, like this is the snail. Oh no, it's actually better if I show you here. That is the snail that I'm going to be cooking. And I know you're thinking, but that's what's all over my agapanthus in my garden. Surely there are different snails that we eat. Throw a question up and we'll get them answered by Mike and Kyle just now. In the meantime, I'm going to get my stove lit up and I'm going to start frying some celery, some onions, and some carrots for this paella. And so I've got my pan up to like pretty, pretty high heat, a ferociously high heat. I'm saving all my butter for uh, the, the next recipe, which is obviously the garlic snails butter. And my wife doesn't know it, but that's the last butter we have in the house. So, um, I have to use it wisely. So quite a generous whack of olive oil. Uh, let's just change the camera angle so you guys can see it. Yeah. Okay, so there's lots and lots of um, olive oil. Mike and Kyle, now you can turn your phone on, on uh, portrait and then huddle up nice and tight because we've lost the middle of both of your faces. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> cool. Okay. So that's, that's getting nice and hot. And we're almost at that magical moment where we can have a nice conversation. We just get this cracking. And so celery, nice, finally, 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 finely diced carrots. When I say paella, what I mean is like paella style because real paella, you use special rice. I'm just using long grain, um, I would say basmati, but I'm not a rice expert. The rice we had inside. All right, guys. So for those of you making this at home, I'm just going to stir this until it's sort of like golden brown. And while we do that, we're going to get some snail wisdom. So guys, honestly, why a snail farm in South Africa? Carl and Mike, are you there? Why snail farming? Yeah, why snail farming? Yes. Are you there? Yeah. Uh, no, well, we, we stumbled across snail farming. We're looking for something to uh, explore when it comes yes. to farming. Uh, we started about two years ago. And the more and more we looked into it and realized that uh, snail, snails in the country only get imported. Uh, and we got great climates here to, to grow them ourselves. And that's when we really started delving into it and started growing snails and experimenting. And that's where we are today. That's nuts. And, and I mean, one of my experiences of snails is that they eat everything in the garden and they proliferate enormous, like they, you just can't get rid of them. So, I mean, as a, it's, it's kind of like, I would imagine it's almost as easy as breeding rabbits. Is, is that true? We, yes, the, the actual farming isn't too tough. It's not very labor intensive. Okay. And tell me a bit about um, the difference between a French eating snail and a local eating snail. Yeah. Uh, Johnny, the, 
the French when they started in Burgundy is that um, they would actually harvest the snails from the vineyards and um, they would purge them. So they would change their diet and kind of clean them from the inside. Um, we're using the, the very similar snail. We're using the helix as spur snail, the same species. Um, the only difference is that we don't purge them it's because we deal with quite a, a large number of snails. So our processing uh, methods are a little bit different, but they're very closely related to the French snail. And that's what sets us apart from the imported snail. The imported snail is a completely different species from Indonesia. So uh, the snails that we farm with are very closely related to the ones that we farm from. Cool. And I heard, a, I heard a rumor that the snails in our garden, like the normal South African garden snail, is actually this, it's, it's actually alien to South Africa and that it was actually brought in by the French. Is that also true? Sorry, John, it's just a little difficult to, to hear you, but um, if I got your question correctly, we import all our breeders from Europe. They do come from okay. Greece. Um, we take our breeders and we reproduce them here in South Africa. So our bloodline is originally from Europe. Okay. Um, and and how, does this, how does this snail differ from the garden snail in South Africa? Because it looks... I mean, if I go into my garden now with the rain, I can find can find you 10 snails that look exactly like this. Yes, they do naturally come in your garden as well, this species, but you also do get the, the African giants. They're the very bigger ones. They've got a sharper shell to them as well. You also find okay. them in your gardens. They are, the, the species is the Fulica maginata, or the Fulica fulica. Um, they just got a little bit of a pointy shell. Um, this is your typical brown garden snail, but um, yeah, when you find a snail in your garden compared to one that is farmed, um, just a change of diet will completely change the, the taste of the, the snail. So, okay. strictly speaking, you're using the same species, but they just farm differently and uh, they become more edible when they've you know, been fed the, the correct feed. That's, now, that's interesting. So, what is the... What is the best diet to make a delicious snail? So um, we, we have a, a couple of plants that we plant. We prefer your Chinese cabbage or, or your rape and lucerne and Swiss chuck. And uh, we also have a slice feed which we, we prepare. It's meal and protein and calcium. Just make sure that they get all the right amounts of calcium and protein in. And as the calcium, I mean, I imagine that just helps them like build a strong shell. Is that true, or is that just like me making stuff up? Yeah. So the calcium, yeah. Is, uh, yeah so typically, your, your garden snail in your garden will take two to five years to reach maturity and sexual reproductive reproductive age, whereby we are doing it within three to five months, giving them specialized feed, no hormones, no additives. Um, it's really good, good feed, and um, that is their primary feed. They prefer that rather than the, the detective feed that we that we give them, and this allows them to grow um, at a faster rate. And um, we just produce a really, really nice snail. I think you'll see the shells there are nice and thick, so they've got a good, um, good calcium intake. And um, when they have um, a good calcium intake, they also reproduce quicker and they lay more eggs. So it's taken us a lot of uh, a lot of time and, um, and experimenting to find the right stuff. But I think we, we're, on a good, uh, we're on the right track at the moment. And yeah, farming's going really well. Lekker, man. So tell me a bit about the, look, I want to get into the business and like who the customers are, like who's buying these snails. Because I've been in the service industry for like 16 years and I've never heard that you could buy them locally. But before we get in there, just the last thing, like, so... The only way I've ever processed a snail at home is by standing on it. And, um, and then I've never really gotten this amazing foot. Now, Shelly, um, one of our team members, she collected them from you in George and, and she processed them. But I want to know how you get a snail, like from being in the shell to being, uh, let's just see, like that. How, what's the process of processing? Yes, okay, well, the... Okay. The process okay. of processing the snails would be, um, first of all, you have to uh, 
You would um, have to de-slime them a little bit by using a salt and vinegar mixture or salt mixture in the water at about 20% salt percent. And then uh, you wash them off nicely. And then you, after that, you got to release them from the shell. So you'll boil them for about two to five minutes or uh, steam them. We use large scale steaming. And it can, then they'll get put into a can and then uh, while in the retorts for about 40 to 50 minutes. So you'd have to then replicate that if you're not canning them. And then that'll, that'll be about 40 minutes breathing in a pressure cooker, maybe. And then when you're ready to go, then you can. Okay, so the so the the reason doing or garlic butter, good old garlic. Lacquer. Yeah, we're gonna do the garlic butter one now. Okay, so like so the, so the thing that makes them soft is actually the pressure cooking them for like forty five minutes. Okay, if I understand correctly, and and uh, so these will be slightly tough, but if we had to pressure cook them or slow braise them in something, they would go slightly more tender. Um, which brings me to my next point, by the way, because. Uh, I just want to change the camera angle here, Nick, to back to this one, because I'm now. This is I've caramelized all my vegetables, and I've caramelized my chorizo, and now I'm just going to chop the the snails. I'm just going to take like half of the snails, maybe a bit more, and I'm just going to roughly chop them. And you guys can tell me if you think I'm making a huge mistake or being rude to the snails, but I just want to get them to slightly smaller bite-sized pieces um, so that I can stir them in because my next step on the, um, on the, what am I making here? Paella is um, to add the liquid and then put the lid on and let this thing tick away. So I've fried off my, what we call like mirepoix. I've got my snail meat here. Jeez, I'm excited about this. Okay. Um, I'm going to add in this, just a touch of the garlic, a little bit of garlic. Um, i add in some a chili. I'm just going to put it in a hole with a slit down the middle so that we can take it out. And I'm going to add in, what was the other thing I wanted to do? Oh, yes, tomato paste. Just a little bit of tomato paste, like half a sachet. Uh, uh, half a sachet, yeah, half a sachet. And what's the other thing I wanted to add? Ooh, yeah, teaspoon, a teaspoon of smoked paprika. I would normally add saffron, but I couldn't find any saffron in my house today, so we're just gonna do without some smoked paprika. And then what I've got here is I've got one cup of rice and I've got and I've got two cups of stock. So I'm gonna add the rice and fry it off just for a second. Just to get it coated in all the goodness. Whoa. I just realized I missed a step, but it's fine. I was going to add in wine. So now I can't add the wine because what's going to happen is the alcohol is going to get sucked into the rice. But what I was going to do was add the wine and then reduce it and then add the rice. Now it's too late, which is fine. Um, okay, so now we've fried it all off, added in all the goodness. I'm going to add in my snails. Yum. And we're going to add in my two cups of stock. And give it a good stir. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to let, I'll just bring it to, throw in some salt as well. Good whack of salt. Come on. I would just want to bring this to the boil and then I'm going to put it on a much smaller burner so that with the lid on so that I can just like pff, all the rice can puff up and get it nice and tender. You can see it's boiling pretty fast. Snail paella. I must tell you guys, I know you've never had a snail paella. I have never had a snail paella either. So this is like, this is the first time for all of us. I'm just, I'm only sad that you guys can't be here in real life to actually taste it. Okay, it's kind of boiling. 
It smells awesome. good. It looks great though. I wish I could see. Thanks, guys. You say all the best, all the right things. Okay. We believe uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm putting on my little burner. And let's just have a look at burner. There we go. We'll transfer. Pop the lid on. Okay. And then we just leave that while we make snail version number two. I did forget one more ingredient, and that was these little tomatoes. And I wonder if I should add these at the end. There's enough tomato in there. That's fine. Cool. All right, so back to the other camera view where we can see your faces. There we go. Thanks, Nick. Okay, back to snails. So you guys thought you would give snail farming a go, and you, you've, like, tried and tested your method. What, who do you, who buys snails from you guys? What, how do you, what is, yeah, where do you sell your snails? Please tell me. Can you hear me? So, yeah, so, so currently um, most of the snails were imported from, previously mentioned. Um, so what we've done now is we've entered market, we've got a few distribution links, they buy from us and then they distribute to, a few um, a few retail stores. Um, we're also looking at the international market now. Um, that was uh, our plan for the future, but um, due to the pandemic, we're looking at other sources in, in in other markets. So we we do not do that. We're looking to export to European countries. So it's going really well at the moment. Um, we we want to increase the the local production of snails. Yeah. Um, in order to make promises to distribution links, they want a consistent supply. So, um, yeah, it's going well. And what is the nutritional buildup? I mean, make a breakdown of a snail, um, like in terms of protein and fat. Do you, am I asking the right guy? So, so John, are you asking about the actual content of the meat of the snail, the proteins and, and so on? Yes, yeah, yeah. So, like, if I was looking at protein per, you know like per kilogram or per 100 grams like is it what is the what is the protein count of a of a snail per 100 grams sorry that's for like the guys a lot of the guys who watch this will be like you know gym people or people trying to stick to a ketogenic diet so the nutritional breakdown matters for a lot of people So, so the protein content of snails is higher than that to do a fine chicken or beef. So it is much higher. So for the gym guys, um, get onto your snails. Um, it's got very, very low fat content, low cholesterol, and it contains nine out of the ten essential amino acids needed for human consumption. So it's a really good protein to be to be eating. Um, so yeah, healthy. And Tell me some of the other ways that you've seen guys prepare snails because this this is like I mean it's a labor of love for a foodie to go and like prepare a whole lot of snails. Are there are there like is there a prospect for an easy snail protein, you know, like a snail sausage or or already processed snails? Sorry, John, I wasn't quite sure. Sorry, we're just getting, a, <laughs> it's just breaking up a little. Okay, no. All right, guys, it looks like we got a bit of a bad connection. So I'll try and keep my sentences as long as possible. But basically, um, what I was trying to find out is like, how, how do we buy the snails from you? Do they, if I buy snails from you, do they come in the shell raw and alive? Or do you sell them pre-packaged out the shell ready to cook? So we will be sending uh, the actual meat to a, once we've processed it, we'll be sending it to a canning facility, and then they will be putting it into a can. Uh, that can will be filled with the brine. And so it's ready to eat. Once you open that can, you uh, cut, and it's ready to eat. You can eat it actually out the can, just like this. Uh, if I could just add to that, John, uh, we're experimenting now to, we understand that the world's kind of going to ready-cooked meals. You know, the family dynamic is changing quite a bit. So yep. we're also looking at introducing 
um, you know, a heat and eat option, you know, where you'll get like a tinned fish and a tomato sauce, a chili based sauce. Um, experiment with that as well so that you can literally just open up a can, bang it over some rice or some pasta, heat it up, and then it's ready to eat. So um, we're looking at different options, and that's definitely in the pipeline. But at the moment, all our product is um, will be filled with brine, and then you would have to just cook it up the way you like it. Got it. Okay, I can hear you loud and clear, guys. I'm I'm afraid uh, the the connection's really bad, and there seems to be a long delay. So I think we're gonna have to say goodbye, and I'll carry on with the cook along, and hopefully you guys can leave some comments. And if I say anything blasphemous about snails, you you can leave a comment. But uh, before you guys head out. Um, do you want to give a shout out to the farm, uh, your website or your Facebook page so that people who are watching know how to find you and where and where to get snails if they want to try it out? Yeah, sure. So we're on Facebook, on Instagram. Um, we've got a website going, so you guys are welcome to contact us through the website. You're, allowed, you're welcome to contact us through, um, through Facebook. And uh, we'll be happy to answer any questions that any of the viewers might have. Lekker, man. That's awesome. Well, Mike and Kyle, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, I hope I do justice to the next dish. I'm very excited. I'm going to be doing some garlic snails. So if you are watching, stay tuned. I'm going to be doing bacon, garlic snails. And Mike and Kyle, I hope you guys have a great weekend. And uh, yeah, I hope we can get you back online when uh, we have a better internet connection. So thanks very much for joining us. All right. Yeah, sorry about that for, for those of you who, who are watching. Um, you know, I wish we had a better connection. And um, that's Mike and Kyle from Goshen Snail Farm. And here we go. So I'm going to cook the next snail recipe now. I'm going to be making uh, garlic and bacon snails. So just to put you up to date, what I've done so far is I've got this pot over here going. This is the, um, the snail paella. Whoa. Guys can see all my, all my business. Okay. Snail pilot. And now I'm going to do a, a snail. I mean, a, a snails and garlic butter. But first, I'm going to do um, some bacon. I'm going to render some bacon fat. And then I'm going to toast my bun. So this, by the way, is a gluten-free uh, like hamburger roll from Woolworths, my, my favorite. Um, the best gluten-free roll, I think, in the country, to be honest. And... Woolworths and I have a complicated history, so it, it definitely they're definitely not paying me to say this. But so I'm going to cut my roll in half, and I'm going to throw my bacon bits into the pan. So this is nitrate-free bacon from the butchery down the road, Black Forest Butchery. They are the best, kind German family. And I'm going to throw a just a splashette of oil in here. Maybe I can put a splash of butter in. Why not? Oh, just to get, get all the juices flowing. And then in the meantime, what I've done is I've got some parsley and some oregano chopped. And that's what I'm going to throw into the paella right at the end. Oh, okay. It's good to be back on camera, I must say. I went on holiday about two and a half weeks ago, and uh, it was glorious. I still haven't added Instagram or Facebook back to my phone. And it's been the most liberating experience of my life. I keep looking at my phone, realizing there's nothing to look at. And then I carry on enjoying my life like nothing happened. Um, if, if you weren't all watching this, I would encourage you to do the same thing. Okay, so these little lardons are getting cooked away. And what I'm trying to do is I want to get enough bacon fat and butter, like juicy goodness, to... to to fry some garlic, and then I'm, I'm just going to add my rolls to the pan. So already I'm going to just add them in so they can start warming through. Every now and then just put them back in, get some bacon juice. It's so funny, like when you become a bacon connoisseur, you can actually smell the different butcheries in the bacon. Like even if I didn't know that I was cooking this. I just got this whiff, like that's black forest bacon. I know that smell. Okay, and then I'm gonna add chives to this. So chives, for those of you who are not familiar with your herbs, chives, they're, they're like, add a fresh 
onion flavor or a fresh garlic flavor. So I'm adding these to the garlic butter. And usually you have two choices. The one is you can add like parsley to a garlic butter and adding parsley to garlic butter has like parsley offsets the garlic to an extent. So you can have parsley and then uh, the parsley like freshens up the the garlic and you'll often, like I think there was a thing called pongo when I was younger and pongo was like a parsley oil tablet that you could take or like capsule that you could take after eating garlic and that would supposedly neutralize the garlic breath. Um, whether or not it's true and it's actually like it works is still a mystery to me but in theory chefs are always taught that parsley offsets the garlic and if you don't want to offset the garlic add chives because the chives is actually going to make that even stronger but it, then you get like the two different types of oniony flavor garlic's like that peppery rich pungent one the chives is like this light fresh oniony flavor but it's not going to help your breath it's just going to help the flavor okay so for those of you watching you can see there's lots of bacon action going here yum and how am i going to play this what do i want to do here all right so I'm going to take out my lardons. I'm going to get all the fat down at the bottom because I want to toast my bun in that. And I don't want to fry the roll in the garlic because then I'm going to get like burnt garlic in my roll. But uh, what should I do? Should I pull the fat out and then pour it back in? Just trying to find a way to do this efficiently. There we go. Okay, fat's out. And then I'll pull the bacon into another dish for later. Save you for later, big guy. Then we pull this fat back in. Yes. And then I'm literally going to fry my bread in the bacon fat. I remember when I used to drink alcohol on a Saturday morning, when we were all hung over and we were having like epic cheat days, we used to fry our bacon and cheese sandwiches in the bacon fat that we had fried the bacon in. And we told ourselves it was going to cure the hangover, but it just filled my life with pain and regret. Uh, and obviously like a million extra unnecessary calories. All right. So what I'm going to do is wait for this to get some color. Yes. Like that and get some paper towel on the side, ready to rock and roll. If there are any interesting questions or comments, Nick, feel free to throw them up. I'm ready. Tell me who you want to be the next guest on the Supper Hero podcast. Tell me if you've ever eaten snails, what recipe you ate. Did you eat them in France? Did you eat them in South Africa? And um, there we go. Okay, so now, toasty goodness. That's caramelized. We're going to just soften them. I mean, drain them on the greaseproof paper. And then I'm going to add in and turn the temperature way down because we don't want to burn the butter. There we go. And throw this in. And cut that in half. There we go. Get that butter in there. Get all the garlic in there. So now I've got butter and bacon fat and garlic all frying together. Now, usually when you add ingredients into the butter, um, the butter stops burning. So you'll see it like went a little bit nutty. And then I threw in the, the garlic and the garlic immediately stopped the butter from browning further. And we want that to stay. We don't want the butter to go any uh, browner, more brown, browner, browner. We don't want to brown the butter any further. What we also want to do is we want to make sure um, the snails get some good loving. So I'm going to throw the snails in right now and the bacon. So we're going to throw the bacon and the snails. Toss them around a bit. Oh, my goodness. You see what this looks like. 
Do you ever heard of like Creole cuisine from the Mississippi? They talk about this thing called gambas. And gambas is like exactly what this is, but with prawns. So you just have a look at that. Snails, butter, garlic, <laughs> and love, all in the same dish. Okay. So we've got the bacon roll. And we've got the, let's get a little plate. Bacon roll. And I'm going to use this as my snail dish. Got a clean one here. And before I do that, I'm going to make sure, let's just see if I can give it one last surge of heat. Pump the temperature right up. Get everything caramelized nicely. Maybe I'll put a little squirt of lemon in here. Give it that last little burst of freshness. Squeeze of lemon. Yes. And finally, we're going to add in our chives. For that burst of garlicky freshness. There we have it. This is like, uh, in French, I, I imagine they would say this is escargot et lardon, which means snails and garlic butter with bacon and, and chives. I don't know what, I can't remember what chives are in French, but anyway, here we go. So that's the magic right there. Look at that. Yes, please. Some of that, please. And of course, I don't have a big serving spoon. Or do I? Nope. Mm, nope. Okay. So we'll pop this down. Just. Some snails in here. There we go, and then let's not remember, let's not forget some extra butter, because butter is good. So I would actually call this—I wouldn't even call this escargot. This is like snail gumbas. Snail gumbas, more butter for your goodness. There we go. Come to my restaurant and enjoy some gluten-free escargot et lardon, and uh, I'll taste it. So I know you guys want to see me eat a snail. I'm going for a run just now. I hope it doesn't repeat on me. Pop that all in there. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now that's pepper. Just need some salt. That is delicious. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Next up, what are we going to do with this paella? Let's have a look. One more little mouthful of the bacon snail. Mm. So let's just check the paella. Aha. And so we've let it steam away. It sucked up all the juices. The rice is cooked perfectly. The only thing left to do to serve this, look, I'll wait for the steam to clear. Let's take this chili out so no one bites into that. Yeah, I probably left it for a little bit too long because I got ex I got so excited. I got so excited. Hey, Erin from Vancouver Island, Canada. It must be like six o'clock in the morning there even earlier welcome so now to finish it off i'm adding in all of my chopped parsley and my oregano remember parsley oregano lemon juice smoked paprika that's like a good spanish combination especially if we're serving it with chorizo so um i'm adding in parsley oregano there was smoked paprika in that went in earlier and a good squeeze of lemon just to freshen it up i squirted half a lemon on my pants 
that's no problem. And put in a big whack of salt. The salt ground is totally like jammed up from hanging out over pots. There we go. Keep it way above the pot so that you don't keep caking it up. Plenty of salt, a little bit of pepper. So this thing, I'm gonna wait until next year if I get enough pepper out of that thing. Okay, so give it a good stir. And what we would hope is that the snails have gone nice and soft. So here's my little snail bowl. And let's serve it up. Get some snails, get some herbs, little bits of chorizo. Um, obviously, if you're a bread eating person, you would serve this with some nice crusty bread. But I've already got my bacon toast. So I'm more than happy with this. Okay, so now let me hold this in front of the camera. And hopefully you can see the detail without the steam. There we go. Paella rice, baby. With snails. Mm. And that is good too. It's not Rate Yourself Friday, but these are really good. Thanks, guys, from Gosh and Snail Farm. And happy Friday to everyone who's watching. I'm actually going to put this down and heat it up a bit later because I'm going to hit Table Mountain and run in the rain. I can't wait. Have a lekker weekend, everyone. And we'll see you next week, hopefully, for some more delicious cook alongs. Bye.